Hello and welcome back to the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass. Here we will talk about the imipridine. The imipridine is also known as the bethidine and it is another opioid analgesic drug. And here we will explain the pharmacology of this medication. And regarding the pictures here, so the first one is of the chemical structure of the mepridine. The black spheres in the chemical structure is for the carbon atoms. The white spheres are for the hydrogen atoms. The red spheres is for the oxygen atoms and the blue spheres is for the nitrogen atoms. And the right picture here showing how the ampule of the mepridine looks like. So let's start by talking about the history of the mepridine. So it is firstly synthesized in the 1939 by the German chemist Otto Eisler and the intention was to create anticholinergic agent but the invention worked as anticholinergic and also as opioid analgesic. And mepridine was the first totally synthetic opioid to be synthesized. And the mepridine is an opioid agonist with anti-mascarinic effects, which is opposite to the morphine. The morphine is also an opioid agonist, but it lead to vagal stimulation. So regarding the mascarinic effects, the bethidine and the morphine are opposite to each other, but regarding the opioid action, they are both agonist opioids. Uh, so the morphine had mascarinic effects related to it. Now let's talk about an overview of the mepridine. So mepridine is the scientific name of the drug. Bethidine is the trade name. And I will use those names interchangeably through this presentation. So you need to be aware that bethidine and mepridine is the names for the same drug. It's a synthetic opioid, as we mentioned earlier, from the phenylpipridine family. And mepridine is the prototype agent of this family. That is why it is sometimes called mepridine family. Compared to morphine, bethidine carries equal risk of addiction and it is more toxic because its metabolite, the norbethidine, was found to have serotonergic effects, so it leads to serotonin syndrome. So in comparison to morphine, it has the same risk of addiction and it is actually more toxic because it, it might lead to serotonin syndrome and it is one of the most commonly used opioids. Now let's explain where the bethidine or the mepridine sits in relation with other opioids. So regarding opioids, we have the natural, we have the semi-synthetic, and we have the synthetic opioids. And all of those agents are also classified into agonist, antagonist, and mixed agonist-antagonist. The natural and the semi-synthetic, all of them are agonist, while the synthetic ones, we have agonist, we have antagonist, and we have mixed agonist-antagonist. So the agonist synthetic opioids are the mepridine family, which are also called the phenylpepridine family. And we have the methadone family and the tramadol family. And mepridine is included in the mepridine family. So it is an agonist synthetic opioid analgesic drug. Now let's move on to the pharmacokinetics of the mepridine. So it is available as intramuscular, subcutaneous, intravenous and oral syrup formulas. It has good absorption when used orally and it has a greater bioavailability than the morphine. The bethidine bioavailability is 50% while the morphine is a 25%. So when the mepridine or the bethidine get, get absorbed into the GIT tract and into the portal vein, then it goes to the liver where it gets the first pass effect and there it gets metabolized by 50% and the other 50 would go into the, into the circulation. That's why the bioavailability is 50%. It is metabolized to norbethidine, 
which is neurotoxic, leading to activation of serotonin receptors, and it may lead to serotonin syndrome, as we explained earlier. So the serotonin syndrome is due to the norbethidine metabolite of the uh, bethidine. It is also called normepridine. So it's excreted through liver and kidney, and its half-life is about 8 to 12 hours. Now let's explain the mechanism of action of the mepridine. So the mepridine or the bethidine work on the opioid receptors, especially the mu opioid receptors in the central nervous system and peripheral tissues, and it works as agonist on these receptors, as we mentioned earlier. And the bethidine has structural similarities to the atropin. That is why it works also as anticholinergic or anti-mascarinic. Now let's talk about the pharmacological effects of the mepridine. So the main differences between the morphine and the mepridine is that the analgesic potency of the mepridine is 10% of the morphine. So it has less analgesic effect than the morphine. And it has anti-mascarinic effects, which is opposite to the morphine because morphine has uh, vagal effects. So when the mepridine activates these opioid receptors, it leads to several central effects, which are effects on the central nervous system. And those include the analgesia, which is again 10% of the morphine, euphoria, which is a pleasant sensation, and it is also less than the morphine, and it is also less than the euphoria caused by the morphine. It also leads to sedation. Sedation is when the patient becomes drowsy or sleepy, and it also leads to respiratory depression because it inhibits the respiratory center, and it leads to cough suppression, and it leads to nausea and vomiting due to its effect on the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the brainstem, and it also leads to pruritus because it leads to histamine release. Activation of these opioid receptors by the mepridine also lead to several peripheral effects, including effects on the cardiovascular system. So it lead to mild increase in the uh, heart rate, uh, and that is opposite to the morphine because the morphine leads to bradycardia, which is a uh, slowing of the heart rate. And in the GIT system, it leads to constipation. Regarding the respiratory system, it leads to bronchoconstruction because of the histamine release associated with the mepridine. Regarding the immune system, it leads to decreased immunity. Let's move on to talk about the therapeutic uses of the mepridine. So mepridine is used in inferior myocardial infarction because the patient usually has a bradycardia and hypotension and mepridine has anti-mascarinic activity. So in inferior MI, the heart conduction system most of the times is affected by the MI and uh, this leads to bradycardia and hypotension. And if we use morphine, the morphine would aggravate the bradycardia. So it is bad to use morphine in inferior MI and it is better to use mepridine because it has anti-mascarinic activity, so it leads to tachycardia, which is better in these situations. It is also used as analgesic in labor because it doesn't prolong labor like the morphine does because it has little to no spasmogenic action, but it is used decrease due to serotonin syndrome. So it is not used anymore for labor because of the serotonin syndrome that comes as an adverse effect to its use. It is preferred in treating the pain associated with diverticulitis because it decreases the intestinal intraluminal pressure and it is preferred in management of shivering during therapeutic hypothermia and bethidine possesses no advantageous effect on biliary spasm or renal colic in comparison with other opioids. So because it has anti-mascarinic effects, you might think it might be beneficial in biliary spasm or renal colic, 
But a lot of studies that's done says that is no advantageous effect on valerian spasm or renal colic in comparison with other opioids. Now let's talk about the adverse effects of the mepridine. So it leads to nausea and vomiting because it activates the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the brainstem and it might lead to urinary retention because of its spasmogenic action on the urethral sphincter. It leads to constipation. It has less sedation compared to other opioids. It doesn't cause meiosis because of the anticholinergic properties that is opposite to the other opioids available because most of them cause meiosis while bethidine does not. It also leads to respiratory depression because of its inhibitory action on the respiratory center. It leads to bronchoconstriction due to histamine release as we mentioned earlier. It also leads to psychosis because it activates the serotonin receptors. It has weak atropine-like action which lead to dry mouth and mild tachycardia. It also leads to tolerance. Tolerance means with recurrent use of the mepridine, uh, similar doses which cause diminishing analgesic effect. Uh, that is because of the receptor That is because of the receptor upregulation. Uh, this would increase the receptors of the opioid receptors and the same dose of mepridine would cause less effect with time. So the patient has to increase the dose in order to get the same effect. It also leads to physical dependence. Physical dependence is with the use of pethidine, there is physiological adaptation and neurotransmitter changes uh, due to the mepridine use. And when the mepridine is uh, interrupted or stopped suddenly, this would lead to withdrawal syndrome. It also leads to addiction with the recurrent use. Addiction is uh, changes in the brain which lead to beh behavioral changes and memory changes in the patient with opioid addiction. And it also leads to serotonin syndrome as we mentioned earlier. Serotonin syndrome is a set of symptoms that occur with the use of pethidine and other serotonergic drugs due to increased serotonin levels in the central nervous system. Symptoms include high blood pressure, tachycardia, fever, agitation, hyperreflexia, tremor, sweating, midriasis, which is pupil dilatation, and diarrhea. And those symptoms range from mild to severe, and complications include seizures and rhabdomyolysis. And methadine risk of serotonin syndrome increases if the patient uses another uh, drug that leads to serotonin syndrome, another serotonergic drug like selective serotonin uh, receptor inhibitors or any other serotonergic drugs. Finally, let's end this video with a comparison between the bethidine and the morphine. So let's start with the chemistry. So the morphine is a natural opioid isolated from the opium plant, while the bethidine is synthetic opioid. The bioavailability of the morphine is 25%, while the bethidine is 50%. The analgesic effect regarding the morphine is strong, regarding the bethidine is weak, which is 10% of the morphine, while using the same dose. And autonomic effects is that the morphine lead to vagal stimulation, while the bethidine lead to anticholinergic effects, which is the opposite to morphine. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like this video so it reaches more people. Please like this video and also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support more, you can buy subscribing to the Patreon, link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.